This video summarizes the steps for the proper installation, operation, and maintenance of the Proco Style 240 and Style 242 rubber expansion joints. Please refer to the user manual provided for additional guidance and precautions. Before installation, always store and handle your product with care and complete the correct pre-installation checks. Details for this can be found in your user manual. There are several installation precautions. Never install next to wafer-type check or butterfly valves. If insulation is required, it must be made removable for periodic inspection. Never paint over the rubber element of the expansion joint. And never apply heat tracing directly into the rubber element of the expansion joint. If you are welding nearby, use precautions around rubber element of the expansion joint. And finally, never install another product between two main anchors. There are various configurations to suit your requirements. This no control unit configuration is only applicable for properly anchored and supported pipe systems. A figure one limit rod configuration controls only the extension capabilities whilst restraining pressure thrust loads for non-proper anchored systems. The figure two control rod configuration builds on the limit rod configuration by enabling compression capabilities. The figure three compression sleeve configuration allows compression to be controlled via the compression sleeve. If space is limited or conflicts occur, then the integral tie rod configuration can be used. This design has the control unit plate function integrated into the design. Before installing, inspect the mating flanges to ensure there's no damage or debris. A flat-faced mating flange is preferred. If raised face flanges are used, the use of a ring gasket is required to prevent damage to the rubber bead. When mating flanges are plastic or FRP and control units are utilized, use a stiffener ring to reinforce the mating flange. Ensure you use flanges with the correct ID to prevent damage to the rubber. The same principle applies to weld neck flanges. To provide additional protection, you may consider using an additional metal gasket. And where possible, try incorporating well-rounded edges. Now that the preparation is complete, it's time to install your product. Carefully place and align the expansion joint into the system. Secure the floating flanges using the mating flange bolts. If using stud bolts, don't extend past four threads to avoid damaging the rubber. If you are installing control unit plates, evenly space, then attach them to the outside edge of the mating flange. Now tighten the finishing bolts and washers to a snug, tight fit. Now gradually torque each bolt in a star pattern within the product's specified range. Never tighten until there is a metal-to-metal -metal contact on the flanges. Insert the required control rod through the control unit plates. Also, add the appropriate hardware for your configuration. Ensure the control sleeve is cut to the appropriate length as per the user manual. Finally, set the control rod gaps for the nuts and compression sleeve length. The outer and inner gaps should meet the maximum extension and minimum compression requirements. Unanchored systems should not have gaps and the nuts should fit snugly. After the installation is complete, ensure you pressure test the system and set up routine maintenance checks as per the user manual. We hope this installation video has been helpful please ensure you refer to the user manual as it contains further details and precautions.